This is a commentary by Michelle Swenson about corruption of Denver government, city elections, and the subversion of democracy. In the CPR report about deep ties between the city of Denver and lobbyists, reporter Ben Marcus observed it is difficult to know where the city ends and the lobbyists begin. Influence peddling knows no limits in Denver. Many lobbyists actively solicit contracts with the city on behalf of their corporate clients, even while they hold contracts to work for the city and also give sizable contributions to mayoral and city council candidates. Even as the three largest lobbyists, CRL Associates, Seward Handling, and the Packner Group, have obtained more than $1 billion of city work for their corporate clients during Mayor Hancock's two terms, they are also the largest contributors to mayoral and city council campaigns. The fact of Denver's looser ethics standards regarding gifts and corporate contributions to city leaders and the huge amount of power vested in the office of mayor has made Denver a cash cow for investor developers. The tripling of the I-70 footprint in a floodplain and largely unremediated Superfund site through Globeville, Elyria, and Swansea is clearly linked to the city's promotion of development of more than 3,000 acres along the mayor's nearly 23-mile corridor of opportunity, extending from north downtown Denver to Denver International Airport. Included is the city's proposed construction of Olympic facilities at the remodeled Western Stock Show site. Reason to vote yes on Initiative 302 to let voters decide whether to spend any more money on any future Olympics. Since 2010, when the City Council vested all power over city parks in the mayor's office, the city has clear-cut trees in four city parks, three of them to provide drainage ditches for 100-year flood protection for developers along I-70. Denver and Colorado are object lessons of the corrupting influence of corporate money on our politics and policymaking. Joel Dyer of the Boulder Weekly has written that oil and gas lobbyists boast of industry controlling 9 of 13 city council seats. Oil and gas have also used Cambridge Analytica techniques of voter data profiling to individually target over 3 million Colorado voters. Unfortunately for the people, Denver campaign finance reform does not take effect until 2020. Corporate media influence elections by profiting from ads that only well-funded candidates can afford. The toxic influence of corporate money on elections is documented at cleanslatenowaction.org, revealing a who's who of corporate elites that fund incumbents like Hancock. A long list of developers, bankers, investors, and lawyer lobbyists, including CRL Associates and Brownstein Hyatt Farber, have purchased city leadership for their gain. Also, view a two-minute YouTube video, North Denver, Ground Zero of Environmental Injustice, illustrating effects of city policy that sacrifices people for the corporate bottom line. Denver needs new leadership that serves people first, not corporate lobbyists.